Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic, where we get to know the people behind the creative industries. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber Smith, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm musician filmmaker Marcia Novelli. If you'd like to be a part of my brand new solo album, please visit marcianovelli.com slash pledge. This week, we're joined by our friend Steve Pafferman, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Steve is an artistpreneur who helps creative people thrive. He's a marketing consultant and coach and recently launched Music Launch Hub, which aims to help musicians collaborate and support each other. Steve's big on growing communities built on reciprocity, just like we are. So we're excited to chat with him about his work and the advice he'd offer to musicians and other creative entrepreneurs. So let's jump right in. How's it going, buddy? Really good. It's, uh, it's awesome to be here at a, in a sunny 1 a.m. here in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 11 a.m. here in uh, the Toronto area. And it is, I, I actually had to check it, it's 4 p.m. here in Glasgow. Um, so thanks, Steve. I think you are probably, you're the only guest that stayed up so late for us. And for that, so. well, we really appreciate well, it. We've had people wake points. up really early for us, but not yeah. stay up late. Uh, so we're not, we're bridging the Atlantic and Pacific. And what else are we bridging here? Come on, who, who's good with geography? <laughs> Uh, you know what? I almost looked this up before the interview. Yeah. I was like, I bet there's like, a, and then I just didn't do it. And now I really wish I did. Well, basically, <laughs> we're bringing the world together is what we're doing. We are. We are, we are peacemakers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something so, like that. Uh, so I, I, I met you, Steve, because uh, you interviewed me way back when. I, I, this is a while ago now. I'm looking forward for that to, to come out. And, uh, and, you know, I got to know you a little bit. And I, I, I thought you were just an awesome and really great dude. So I remember telling Ross right away, we got to get him on the show. So it's taken us a little while to get that going, but you are on now. And I want you to tell everyone that's listening right now, three things about yourself that everyone should know. Three things. One, uh, I'm an empath. That's probably like the big thing. Um, I think that's where everything that I do comes from. I've, I've been an empath since I was a kid. Um, just like uh, being surrounded by uh, my parents who were super loving people. And, uh, and I think that's, that's fundamentally changed the way that I put things together, be it my music or, or market things or help artists. Um, that's probably the main one. Um, number two, I'm probably uh, one of the weirder business people that, you, that, that you'd meet. I used to be really nervous about um, kind of getting out there and showing that I am actually pretty strange, but uh, maybe we'll see that through this interview a little bit more. So i um, kind of like a combination of, you know, one minute I'll be on stage playing and I'll seem kind of cool, but then next minute it's like, geez, this dude's awkward, you know, or super nerdy, you know, like there's, uh, there's a very, some weird different sides to me. Um, and the last bit, I'm probably the least practiced musician that exists. Uh, <laughs> I, I love know. playing music, but <laughs> I just see. do not practice. <laughs> So, I don't love tell my bandmates. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, man. You know, Your I secret love is safe with us. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, it's not. No, it's really not. Sorry. But they won't watch this, so it's all right. <laughs> weird is good, man. Weird is good. Yeah, we're pretty, <laughs> we're pretty fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speak uh, for myself. God, no, I mean, seriously, you should see some of like, the text conversations that Marcio and I have between us. <laughs> yeah, I think weird is good, especially when it's that someone you, you know, if you're working with someone, like, it's kind of nice to be able to be kind of weird because i think everyone's weird like no one everyone's likes to sides. admit yeah. that they're weird but i think everyone is pretty weird behind closed doors everyone is just a little yeah. bit crazy um you're talking so, about in bed right um, <laughs> yeah of course yeah, yeah so, i mean every, oh, everything I, yeah i know yeah <laughs> yeah no <laughs> marcia had to take it there marcia i always, always do so now that we've covered that you know we're all pretty weird uh, which is probably why we all get along and you know we're doing this interview because Steve, obviously I met you, I met you on Twitter quite a while ago. Uh, we had a Skype call, although the first Skype call, I didn't find you that weird. That's, and I just, that's good. I, yeah. I pro I would have had my, um, my straight shoes on like, uh, like I got to play, I don't know. I want this dude to like me. I've got to play down the line a bit, you know, probably wasn't going to throw out jokes left, right and center. Um, but I like maybe honesty. I should have. I like maybe that I honesty. Should've. I like that 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 <laughs> vulnerability that you you know just want people to like you. I think we all have that. Thing. People pretend yeah, like they do. don't, but we Nobody all says have it. That. We all do. We all yeah, do. totally. Yeah, we all do. Um, so, but we don't get out there enough and be like, "Hey, you know what? If we're just ourselves, people, the, you know, people like us more anyway." So that that's definitely been a big journey for me, overcoming that barrier of this is who I 
think people should think I am and this is who I really am. And it's like every day I'm trying to be a bit more of like fusing them together. It's well, hard though. What's well, the whole idea of being trying to be everything to everyone or just kind of attracting the people that you're probably going to click with anyway if you're just okay. yourself? Yeah. You know? And That's actually, totally. that kind of leads quite well into the, the first kind of question that I wanted to ask you because um, when it comes to marketing, I think uh, there are a lot of mistakes that artists and creative entrepreneurs make. Um, I mean, I feel I probably made some of them early on. And I, I, actually, I think some, some of the bigger mistakes I feel I made was not really being myself as much as I should have when it came to social media and you know promoting myself online, not all this kind of stuff. So I, I, I'm getting there. I'm still not quite... 100% there, but I'm definitely getting there. What do you think, maybe aside from that, are, um, are the biggest problems or mistakes that artists or other creative entrepreneurs are making uh, when it comes to finding their target audience and marketing themselves? Yeah, totally. That's an awesome question. And, and just quickly, I, I think you're exactly right. Like some of the posts that you put out that people connect with massively are your most open ones and most real ones. And keep doing that. Um, that says it all. And that's, that's the same for everybody. If, and they should follow you. I mean, they probably already do, but uh, should definitely follow you to see that kind of authenticity in posts. It's really, really good because artists can do that stuff too. Um, so there's, there's the, th here's the, here's the interesting thing um, is I think a lot of artists think they need to do X, Y, Z because everybody else is doing X, Y, Z, or, you know, I need to be on these channels and I need to do these types of content and, they go and listen to five different people talk about this is how you do things the right way and this is how you get your label deal and all that stuff's really relevant. But in amongst all that information, it's really easy to forget that the, that particular artist might genuinely suck at social media and might be really, really good at face-to-face -face connections. So there's like there's some different strengths that they could use in that sense by um, by ignoring particular pieces of advice. I think. It actually does fit in really nicely because we all try and fit that mold of what we think we should do because social media is going to make us famous or, um, you know, if we blow up on a streaming service, we're going to hit that next level. It's like maybe that's not your strength. So I think understanding the strengths and the weaknesses that you have and understanding which things need to be honed um, and that maybe it's not everything. And, um, and I, think, I think being really real with yourself and, and looking at some of those things is probably a, like a really important step that a lot of artists miss at the start. All creative people, really. Well, it's funny because um, <laughs> it's the idea that experts, there are experts, quote unquote, you know, and, and they know, they must, they, they know what you have to do. You know, you have to listen to them. That's a fault though. Yeah, you got to be yourself. And whether that means that, yeah, it's going to sound silly, but you tweet like once a day or you tweet 10 times a day, if that's just naturally what you're doing, sure. You know, this kind of, this kind of leads well into the uh, next question I have for you, but you know, would you say that marketing is a misunderstood term, you know, especially from an artist standpoint, um, should it be thought more as, uh, making connections with the right audience? It should be, it should be, here's the, I'm so glad you asked this. Like, I can't tell you how pleased, um, this is this marketing should be seen as just your life. <laughs> Um, I think that marketing has got a bad rap because of all the tactics and strategies that people try and tell you you need to do, i.e. do these 10 Facebook ads and you will suddenly have a music career is like a little crap, really. Um, but understanding that there's so many different things which actually fundamentally underpin your career um, and even your personal relationships is all intrinsically linked to marketing. Um, I wish I could transfer, take marketing out and just call it like your career <laughs> or like I, I need to find a term that's going to work better because I think it puts people off. But like the way you lead yourself, the way you talk to other people, like you say, building connections is huge. Um, this, all this stuff fundamentally underpins your creative process as well. Not to say that you should change your creative process because of marketing, but it can, it can totally change what you create for the better and who it's for. Um, so it changes the, what you build for people. It changes what you make. It changes how you talk to people and it changes how they come back at you as well. I, yeah, I, it's life. Marketing is life and we all have to do it. Um, but it's not marketing if it, unless you see it that way, I think. Yeah, I think it's just sharing. At least for me, it's, it's just sharing um, what you feel comfortable sharing from your life. You know, mm -hmm. because it can't just, and I've fallen into this where I'm just, you know, especially if you're excited about a new release, you know, I just, I just did a, uh, started a crowdfunding not so long ago and I just wanted to blast people, you know, crowdfund, 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 because I'm excited about it. I want, but then it's like, okay, wait, you know, 
if that were an artist I was following, I'd be like, okay, I got, I saw the first 50 tweets. <laughs> you know, just yeah. chill out. I'll get to it when I get to it, you know? So then I remember, okay, yeah. yeah, no, I just, I want, I need to share other things in my life, you know? And a big part of my life is my kids and my wife and it's just my life. I want to share it with people and, you know, and in turn, you know, it, it helps people feel more connected to the artist. You know, it's, it's not, when you use the word marketing, it sounds like it's a very, um, uh, I mean, planned and what's the word I'm looking for? You know, not very uh, honest way of approach to things, but that's not the way I, I feel like it is. I feel like as an artist, if you do it right, it's just literally sharing. Like, like you would, you know, have sh- go home and, and show friends pictures of a vacation you went on, you know, 10, 20 years ago, but before social media, you know, but it's just that you're doing it on a public platform and you're showing people. I'm going on and on today, but I just, you know, it's something that it, it's important for people to know the difference between you know, feeling like you're just trying to manipulate an audience and really just sharing and, you know, the right people. Totally. Um, yeah. And, and it's so, it's so true too, because I think if you, if you're sitting there going, how do I get this message out so I can, you know, for want of a better term, how can I manipulate people to buy my record is far less in, useful or, you know, w- what tactic am I going to use to make this work is going to be far less useful than how can I make another friend today? Yeah. Um, it's the idea of not selling a product, but sell, you know, an emotion or yourself, you know, sell something real, you know, and people will gravitate towards it and then want to support you and buy your record and merch because you're not saying, buy this, buy this. You're saying, Hey, support me. If you like, you know, yeah. 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 I I still amazed how many artists there are that are are doing the listen to my song, buy my song. Oh my God. Like the amount of tweets. Do that. We get, I get tweets and this one makes sense for like, I I can understand Bridget Lanty gets this, but I get personal tweets that are just like, not a hello, nothing. It's like new single, check out. And I'm just like, yeah. no, <laughs> it's the <laughs> not worst. Gonna, it dri- it's it not drives even my me, genre or anything. Exactly. Oh. And that's what drives me crazy. It's like, that's the whole <clears throat> thing. It's like, instead of actually have, trying to have a conversation or build a relationship, it's, it's all just, this is what I'm about. And I want you to check what I'm about. This is mine. And I want you to listen to it because that benefits me, but it doesn't necessarily benefit you. I can't, I, I just, it's, the, the, <laughs> it's the gimme, 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 gimme mentality. This is the really interesting thing as well, because like, like people like us have a vested interest in being interested in music mm-hmm. and we are genuinely pissed off when people do that to us. So it's like, imagine somebody who doesn't have a vested interest in being interested in music. Like, are they going to have a different response? Probably a worse one. <laughs> like, um, and that's the thing. It's like, it's a gimme, gimme, gimme attitude that's actually doing more harm than, than anything. Um, which it's, that's what crushes me. It's like, I, I, I actually am genuinely confused that it's still a thing that yeah. happens. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, and this kind of goes into, uh, you're very big on, I know on the 80, 20 rule. Uh, so like 80% of what, of what you put out is non promotional or, or anything like that. And maybe 20%, mm-hmm. and sometimes even less is actually promoting a product or, or whatever it is. Um, do you think that, are you seeing a lot of artists still kind of, not even not maybe not even being 50 50 like they're st- they're so far yeah. off like the kind of uh percentage of of non-promotional kind of stuff yeah oh definitely definitely for sure and it's and it's an interesting one because i i used to talk about this um a lot more than i do now and 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 actually having time to reflect after all the um after all the campaigns i've been working on the last few years i'm working directly with artists a lot more is I'd almost say there are times when it should be 100, just 100 content, um, yeah. 90, 10, 93 to, th- you know, to seven and, and be really up in that, in that spot of give, 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 create, create, give. And that gives you kind of like bank to come back to that 20% at the right times. But there's probably a week in there if you're giving enough where you can go 50, 50. Gosh, you could probably even spin it back the other way and be 90% in for the sell. If you're, if you're putting out an album, you know, you build up enough credit over time in the, in the bank of goodwill. And, um, and you can, you can essentially flip that on its head. But as a general rule, if um, that's getting a bit more creative with, with, and really takes a solid strategy, I think as a general rule, it's a pretty, it's a good thing to follow, to follow that one in five um, is something, but, but here's the thing, the one in five should be a, should be a, you know, it's, hey, here's a free track, you know, still. If it's promotional, the, the transaction should be low. It shouldn't be a dollar figure. And I think that's really important. See, a lot of artists are just, they're just basically 
share a link straight to their iTunes and that's fine at certain times. But like if somebody is invested in you, then they probably already listening to your music or they've already bought it. Um, the thing is finding those extra people and they're going to find their way to your music if you treat them well. Um, but yeah, too much, too much selling without enough give. It's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. I love that you said that. And I, I, I've fallen into that mistake before too, you know, but it's the funniest. Th- yeah, of course. The funniest thing though is in times where, you know, music kind of slowed down and it's okay. You need those moments. I think, you know, everyone thinks you always have to go and you go, you go. Actually, sometimes when you have that little break, you actually come back stronger, you know? And, uh, you know, when I had, when I first had my, my first son, like, things kind of slowed down a little bit, but you know what? It was like a hundred percent just my life. And there was never more engagement than then. You know, and then yeah. when you come back with something, you know, uh, like you said, it's almost like, and again, it's it's not a manipulation; it's an honesty thing. You've built up enough goodwill. Like I don't, ha- you know, take me out of the picture. An artist doesn't really have to share anything with an audience, but since they're doing that for like a year, not asking for anything in return, and it's like, hey, I am working on something. You guys want to check it out? You know, there's there's like, okay, he hasn't been like throwing things at me for the last year. It, there is a, a level of um, trust, I guess, in honesty that comes across. You know, but this has to be real. You can't do that. You can't like if someone's listening to us, like they listen to the pants, be like, okay, yeah, yeah. So I'll spend a year manipulating, you know, getting people to trust me, and then oh, blast was like, no, it has to be real and honest. You know, it has to come from a genuine yeah. place. And we'll be know? watching yeah. to see if you do that. We'll come back. To <laughs> you. For me, for me. I, I, oh, no, no, not I, I, you. I, I mean, literally. anyone's oh, listening. Oh, we'll, we will be watching. <laughs> Everyone, yep. every yeah. single viewer, we're tracking you. I will. I, I'm, I'm, I'll literally be. Yeah, every, every day, day, every day. <laughs> you know, but I do. I do want to add to what you said there. I actually recently just read an article. I, I don't remember who it's by, um, but it. They actually. Um, it was on a Saudi. It was a Saudi Pits article. They had mentioned a um, 70 2010 rule, which was interesting. Seventy being just, mm. you know, content from your life. Twenty being promotional, and ten being promotional for other artists. And I was like, huh, that's actually really good to put in there because you know what? I forget to do that sometimes. There's so much stuff I, sh- I, I love, everything from, you know, major to independent, you know? And like I was just listening to uh, uh, Tegan and Sarah, some of their older stuff the other day. And there's there's a there's an old acoustic version, like literally like 10 years ago. They're like, they're mid-20s. They're so cute. I miss them like that. <laughs> they're mullets. And, uh, you know, anyways, it's just like sharing that is not only sharing someone else's music, but it actually gives your audience a sense into what you're into. And that actually is just an indirect way to get them to know what you're about. And yet you're promoting another artist and it's not just me, me, me. And it's not, you know, so I actually like that. I want to add that a bit more into my social media to share more of other people. I think that's really cool. And it brings up another thing that that's really two act, two things that are really important to keep in mind here for, for anybody watching too, is the thing that makes that powerful is one, the story and two, the context of where you are so like for me, for example, like if I see an artist just going, hey, check out this, if they do the same thing, like they would be spamming their music, but with somebody else, the same thing's going to happen. People are going to go, why is that band sharing another band I've never heard of? But you go out there and go, hey, I actually, um, I just created a, a playlist on Spotify of my 20 favorite bands from high school. You wouldn't believe some of these things, but I thought you guys might like to listen and see where I got some of my inspiration from telling a story and then one, you share that on Facebook, maybe not so much on Twitter. Like you got to not understand what's going on in that actual platform itself. Like if you've got engaged fans on Facebook, you can tell that long form story and get people probably engaged in that playlist. You're not asking for anything else in return. You're being a brilliant curator and a brilliant storyteller. Um, and then on Twitter, maybe there's a different kind of tactic there where you go, hey, this band just followed us. Check them out. They are super rad. It's going to work far better in, 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 in that sense. So I think... Um, we can all learn more about the platforms that we're on and, and treat them appropriately. And we can do that just by spending a bit more time there and seeing what other people are doing and one being ready to tell a story to go, Hey, this is, um, this is a favorite band I just checked out, or I just made something for you. It's a playlist of my current tracks or something like make something special. I love that, man. I love that. I really, really do. Stories are definitely important. Mm. And context Mm. is context can change everything really like you know it can make something seem spammy or it can make something more meaningful and you know Mm. actually useful um i'd love to talk a little bit about music launch hub because i know um you interviewed both myself and marcio uh separately for music launch Hub. of course yeah um yeah (laughs) (laughs) when was that by the way just interject was that like too long ago 
Too, yeah, yeah. Long too ago, too long ago. Um, All right. And, well, tell and, us about it. And when can uh, people expect to find out more about it? A uh, little bit. Well, the, so the community is open. Um, that's, that's, that's a thing now. It's kicking off with a Facebook group. Come in. Come and say hello. It'll be free forever for people, artists, just to come and collaborate and network. And basically, it's going to be a group where there's, there's no, there's no uh, sun facts. I will actually apologize in advance if you come in and you want to share your music. You can't unless somebody asks you or I let you do it. Um, but it's, but honestly, the, the, the idea is to get people coming in and talking and asking questions and talking about things they're interested in and struggling with and actually building up a dialogue rather than just pushing stuff. Um, and so it's going to be quite a, quite a, it's quite a special little place with stuff to get ahead each day. And we're talking, and this is for, you know, the music professionals as well as the artists too. So um, I think we can all help each other a lot more. It's, um, it's, and, you know, a lot of us have exactly that in two forms, you know, with both of those things too. So it's um, pretty excited about it. I'm excited to have you guys on the, on the, on the, um, on the summit, which will be later in the year, which is basically a bunch of, you know, awesome people talking about what they're great at um, and, uh, and, and helping other artists is just a, uh, it's going to be, yeah, kind of, kind of the place where people can get the help that they need early on in their career, but also to take it to that next point too. So come and hang out and chat and, um, and uh, yeah, don't, here's the, the lesson here is also always just try, don't be afraid of just trying things out. I think that's something that I've learned more recently. Like you say, I interviewed you guys late last year. I should have had it out earlier this year and I let too many things get in the way of that. So don't be afraid of just throwing your stuff out there. I literally opened up this Facebook group the other day because I'm like, what am I doing? I just opened it up. <laughs> Why have I done I love this it. Yet? Well, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, jump on there. I love that idea. And it's all about helping each other. And I think the idea of not allowing, um, you know, some people might be, why aren't you allowing me to post my stuff? Because then it just becomes this band group. And no yeah, artists, like most artists group. aren't yeah. excited to hear other artists. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's, so it's the idea of, I love that idea. Like, you know, guys, hey, you know, I, I've never done this. You know, anyone else has done this, you know, can you help me out? Or, you know, I'd love to go, I'd love, personally like to go on there. Maybe if someone has, uh, you know, some things I have done that they've never done, I'd love to share some advice and maybe that karma comes back around, you know? I'm really excited about that. I'm really uh, honestly going to get on there. Yeah, I'm going to get, um, yeah, get we'll on see. that as well. Yeah, Absolutely. And fun. well, speaking about Music Launch, uh, uh, Music Launch Hub, sorry. So it's called, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So speaking about Music Launch Hub, um, can you give us three tips uh, for artists who are struggling to get their message out there? Uh one, think about the, I'm going to go back to the empath thing. Think about mm -hmm. the person that you want to make friends with, that you're going to get a little weird with, um, <laughs> and, and try and think about how you can connect with them, what you would want if, um, you know, you were them, and, uh, and start telling stories about that. Start telling stories about your life, about things that they might find interesting, and think about that person. Um, number two, if you're, if you're like a bit on the fence with something in the marketing space, Try falling in love with it because I, I was even being the social media dude. I got sick of talking about Twitter for so long um, that I just started being like, I can't even go on this platform anymore. I had to reinvest my heart back into social media, um, which is really paying off now. And I'm, I'm not seeing um, this. Another reason why I was scared about opening up a Facebook group is I'm like, man, that's going to be like the rest of my life. And that's how I see things when I, when I dive into something. I'm like, I'm going to be looking after these this group for the rest of my life. And I had to reinforce, I had to flip it on its head and go, no, I get to hang out with awesome people every day for the rest of my life. And so I'm not seeing it as a group or as a tool for something. I'm seeing it as a place where I can bring people together and I can get, hang out with them. So if you're struggling with something, flip it on its head, see if, see, try and see it from another side and, and, and get that heart involved. And, it, and you, you start to see the things that I think you really can spend more time on and, and things that really do grind you as well doing that. Um, that's too, I don't know what the other one is. I'm too big on those two right now. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> that's okay. We call that three. That's fine. We like two <laughs> great fine. ones that's rather three. than three meh ones. So yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll take See, that. this is why you're on the show. We think you're great and we want people to get to know you. So let's get to know you even more with 20 questions. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Meat or veggies? Uh, veggies. TV or Netflix? Netflix. Twitter or Facebook? Well, oh, I used to be Twitter, but so much you can do on Facebook. So much opportunity. Facebook. Yoga or yogurt? Uh, definitely yogurt. I can't do, the, I can't do any of that. <laughs> Canada or Scotland? Never been to Scotland, although I'm a big whiskey fan. Love Toronto. Got to say Canada. 
Arrested Development or Archer? Oh, Archer, all the yeah. way. Yeah, so much, okay. so much sly okay. joke in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Indie or major? Indie all the way. We can actually band together and break the mate. We'll not need the majors. We don't need them if we work together. The way it's going, brother. Talent or attitude? Attitude. Attitude. Attitude can bring talent. Now this is uh, for anyone that's not Australian, uh, they, they might not get this one, but home and away or neighbors? <laughs> uh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. If anybody knows what either of those are, then you lose. I, I, home and away, I've seen more of it. Oh gosh. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh it crushes me to say that. <laughs> beer or bourbon? Beer. Craft beer. Good beer. South Park <laughs> or Family Guy? Oh, tough one. I'm going to. Uh, like I was into South Park first. So I'll go South Park first. Education Patriot. or experience? Experience because that experience will actually give you education. So education through experience. Kangaroos or koalas? Oh, kangaroos. Yeah. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Does he even know who Michael I, Bolton? Do you guys know who that is out there? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I almost want to say that because I don't have no okay. idea who he is. Just Michael do it for Jackson. Us. Okay. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Oh, Marilyn Manson. I'm a heavy metal, well, not a heavy metal fan, but I like my heavy music, so. Nice, nice. Deep down. Orange is the yeah. New Black or Wentworth? It's Wentworth. I like Orange is the New Black. I'm with that. What's You've never Wentworth? seen Wentworth? No. It's, an Australian, it's kind of like an Australian version of uh, Orange is the New Black, but it's a bit more dramatic and serious, and it's really good. You should get on it. It is on I Netflix. I like that. It's, it's so good. check it out. So did, did you know we're like the worst downloaders, like str- like torrenters in the in the world because we just don't get given stuff. <laughs> Australians oh. are real bad. We just steal it. Well, Wentworth is an Australian show, though. That's the thing. Oh, we would definitely steal it if we could get it. We probably <laughs> <do>. <laughs> even if it's your own show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd be like, oh, it's not on. It's not out until next week. Done. I'm happy. Yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> you guys would still get it before we would. I almost guarantee it. Probably. <laughs> Will or kale. Uh, what was, oh, well, if it's to eat, definitely kale. If it's to look at, probably whale. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. say kale just in case. I don't know what the context of the question is. We I don't want to get either. in trouble. There, we don't really okay. know. Okay. There's no, no context. <laughs> I don't lo- uh, <laughs> Whale watching kale. Let's Chomping. go with whale. <laughs> <laughs> Bet Midler or the Riddler? Uh, the Riddler. I think I, yeah, the Riddler. And, and the final, final most question. important question. Yeah, Ross or Marcio? Ah, yeah. Well, I mean, I got to go with the. Uh, I mean, I met Ross first. Oh I think you both God. are awesome, but I'm I'm a patriot. I got to go with the. I got to go with the only one. That's a heartbreaking question. Wow, guys. you know what's yeah. even more heartbreak <laughs> is when they actually. <laughs> I <pick>. was- <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the whole time yeah. this was just to see how many people would actually pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You're well, like, okay. oh my god, he's actually done it. He's actually, he's actually done, done it. it. I can't believe it. I'm taking it. this seriously. This is I... always so awkward because I almost always lose, and I'm always the one to be like, by the way, you can find Steve at <laughs> stevepelfryman.com and musiclaunchhub.com. His Twitter is Steve Pelfreyman, as well as his Facebook and Instagram. Go follow him. The guy who picked Ross over me. <laughs> Oh no, I just shot myself in the foot. <laughs> oh. You're okay, Steve. Don't worry. I'll Marcio and I, you know, I, I have to talk him down after every episode, so <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Well, as for me, I'm working on my second solo album and you can be a part of it at pledgemusic.com slash Valley. I also recently released my award winning documentary Walking Proof, which chronicles the making of my debut solo album, and you can watch that for free at marcianavelli.com slash walking proof. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify, which are all Marcinavelli. I'm gonna take a breath now. <laughs> yeah. God, I I was I feel out of breath listening to that. Um <laughs> As for me, I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. Uh, you can check out my work and my blog at electrickiwi.co.uk. You will find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton, the rock star advocate, Buck Naked Soap Company, and Social Surge. They are all so awesome for helping to make sure that this show stays on, I was going to say on the air, but stays alive, on breathing, the internet. alive, living. stays alive. Yeah. Keeps its heart um, beating. And, yeah so make sure to go follow them 
Uh, all their links are in the show notes. Um, and uh, if you want to help us out, Ross will, I guess, tell you how to do that. <laughs> yeah, thanks for almost stealing my line. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to sponsor the show, visit patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. And uh, just to let you know, sponsoring gets you advertising space on the show. So it's a win-win. It's not about all, all about gimme, 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 gimme. It's about what you can give us and what we can give you back. That's what it's about. Uh, Steve, seriously, man, thanks so much for coming on the show. You are you are a real awesome dude. You really are. Thanks. Uh, you two. Uh, this has been the funnest interview I've done, hands down. Um, this is yeah. so fun to hang out with. I wish we could just hang out every day. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome, and we'll see you on next week's episode. Awesome.